um, CEO and co-founder of Esdali, Save the Deaf and Endangered Languages Initiative. Esdali was founded in 2014, officially. It started operations in 2013. Officially, it became an organization registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission in Nigeria in 2014. 2015, I left the country and at the invitation of the University of New Mexico in the United States, where I'm currently teaching and also researching. And eventually, my work there is what we're doing here today. So that is letting you know that what we're doing is not just local. It is internationally recognized. Right now, what we are doing here, what we came here to do is to document a piece of literacy material called My Hero Is You. Um, My Hero Is You is a literacy book for COVID-19 for children across the world. My Hero Is You has been translated into um, several languages across the world. It is being sponsored by multinational organizations. And I worked with some of my team members to translate My Hero Issue into Igbo language. I am Igbo, I speak Igbo, and I am a linguistic scholar. So, and after that, because of my unique project with the deaf community and indigenous sign language, um, I was um, given the go ahead to translate My Hero Issue into indigenous Nigerian sign languages. And so my team, the deaf signers, have been working with the team as Delhi to translate, to provide a translation of My Hero Issue into indigenous Nigerian sign languages. And so this, this project has been going on for a while now. Now, I started by telling you a little bit because of our news call for you to have a little bit of uh, uh, background information of what we do. I started by telling you a little bit of how SLE started and what we do. So SLE started in 2014 when we um, had this contact, unique contact with the, some deaf young people who were isolated in their world. And um, I, I think if I'm not wrong, if I graduated from um, the secondary school for the deaf Orodo, secondary school for the deaf Orodo in Imo State. And a lot of young people who are in that school feel isolated. When we met them, um, eventually that, that, that trip was taken by me and my wife, and my wife is also a linguist. And when we took up our um, inquiry in that school to find out what is going on. It, it wasn't a very good news we heard about those students. So we decided to talk about it to the community people, everybody we saw, we started asking them, do you know about this school where students are being abandoned by their families? So as a, a linguist and as a lecturer then, I started asking questions about how to use my career to solve the problem of lack of communication between deaf children and their parents. This is the core piece that made Esdele to become unique in our operatives. We didn't want to go giving rice beans and every, any other food item or whatever to the deaf children we saw in that school as a means of solving their problem. Because when we heard that the deaf students that are in that school, they do not have electricity, we saw that. And we heard that many of the times, and many of them, their parents abandoned them in that school. And their parents don't do that because they don't love them. No. But because they lack communication between them. So we started digging deep to find out the, the experience of children born deaf in hearing families in this country. Um, some of the deaf people that we have in our midst and those 
you know, that we work with greatly in a you know larger perspective can tell the story, those of them that became deaf either as children or um, that had congenital hearing loss. They can testify that if they are born in hearing families, a good number of them, you know, grew up without having to communicate with their family members because it is not easy for parents to um, go to learn sign language. The pieces are too much because there is a confliction of language variety that the deaf children um, are being taught in this country and we're going to get to that. So because of that we started seeking solution to that communication gap that exists between deaf children born in hearing families in this country and their family members. And so when we put that aside, we found out that in the deaf schools where some of us here are working, the variety of sign language that is being taught is the one regarded as American Sign Language. Now, technically, we, we will say it is not American Sign Language, but the issue is it is a variety of language that is considered foreign. It is not indigenous. It is not local, per se. And we came back to put it into spoken language perspective whereby all of us we are born in our communities even if you are born in the city in Abuja where you speak English your parents came from a community where there is a language spoken in this country of course Nigeria has a variety of languages spoken but each one of us comes from a community that speaks a unique language with which we are known and I've just told you that I speak Igbo. It doesn't matter how I speak English. I'm proud of my language and I speak it. And I want my children to speak it. And that is part of who we are. That is our identity. Now, Nigeria occupies a unique position in the world because we are a conglomeration of different communities, different tribes that come together as, as, as a, a country. That doesn't make us to have one spoken Nigerian language even though we all speak pidgin, right? Even though we speak English, which is totally foreign by virtue of colonization. But we know that Nigerians, who are Nigerians, English is not our language. Even if you will say it is Nigerian English, it is still English that is Christian Nigerian. We know, yes, it's unique. But that does not take away the, those languages each one of us speak. So that is how it is for the deaf communities. Every deaf community has their own language. Every deaf person comes from a, a community. But in Nigeria, there's this unique distribution of deaf people whereby not all deaf people are born into deaf communities. So many deaf people are born in the general larger community. We are hearing people have everything to do with them. Hearing families, hearing communities, and because some of these deaf people, when they are born, did not have access to any piece of sign language except when they get to school. You find out that the only language that is available for them to learn is that one that is taught them in school, which is considered American Sign Language. Now, S. Daly came to have problem with this. How can American Sign Language be the language of the deaf people in Nigeria? who have not been to America, who may not be to America in their lives. How can it be a language that a deaf child that is born in Nigeria, in my local community, be, be raised with? Why, why would it be? If we, turn the, if we turn the table, is there a way we can have Nigerian Sign Language become the language that a deaf child born in America would have to learn and grow with? Is it possible? Even if it happens, can we say it's a normal thing? It is never a normal thing. There is no community that allows another community language to be the language that they grow up with. And maybe some of what I'm saying might sound strange, but this is as real as it is. Every community has a language. 
every person was born into a community and that person is supposed to speak that language of identity but for the deaf person uh, community in nigeria it is a different story